The next song we will be doing is called Hena Masavaya, and it's from Indonesia, and it will feature our soloist Shailen Tani. Oh. 
This, sec this next song is called Surma, and it's from Finland. And um, it, the lyrics talk about um, escaping death. Our next song is Utime um, Tierta, which is a Swedish song by the group Kraya, and it's, it's a love song, and it's just the women for this song.
the last song we're going to perform is from a singer called Himogen Hip. She did this song using um, a lot of vocal loops, but tonight we're, today we're going to sing it with uh, 13 voices. Thanks for listening. Okay, so what is, that was pretty cool, right? It's pretty different, pretty great. So yeah, Peggy Larson, it's really cool. Um, obviously, it is probably very evident to you that the amount of time, work, and effort, and 
uh, stretching your boundaries and being courageous to do that kind of music. For most of the students here, that's not really what they grow up listening to or what they think they're going to go end up doing. So um, it's a great kind of lesson for them to try new things, and, and Peggy is great about just kind of going full bore in, into all of that. So um, I'm really proud of that ensemble. I'm really proud of all the ensembles. But um, we have another ensemble that I'm very proud of. Uh, it's the Sonic Men's Ensemble led by uh, Sean Parker. Um, I am new here, but from what I hear, uh, this group has come a long way in a very short amount of time. And uh, I think it speaks to both Sean's dedication to the group and, um, and the group's dedication. I have uh, a couple times come into school uh, later at night and seen them rehearsing by themselves in a practice room. And um, that kind of dedication, I think, stems from the director, but also stems from their, their good old character and getting in there and practicing. So um, I think they sound great. I think they're, gonna, I think they're really going to blow you away. This is some good old men's a cappella singing which we all uh, love, I'm sure. I'm just assuming that you all love this kind of stuff. But um, without any further ado, here's Sonic. Give him a round of applause. Welcome, everybody. This is Sonic, as you know. <clears throat> that tune was, uh, was arranged by a guy who's very special to me. It's my father-in-law, Jim Scoville. 
uh, just an amazing songwriter, and that is a premier performance of that arrangement. Uh, I helped just a tiny bit of tweaking for these guys, but uh, if you could please just give a round of applause for my father-in-law for that arrangement, that'd be great. Thank you. Take a breath. Calm down. Take it easy, fellas. All right. So these guys, uh, I'm so proud of them, have done so much work this semester, and uh, we're going to move on to our next tune, which is a very popular chart from back in the day, featuring Sexy Rabbit Man on the end there, also known as Fraser. <laughs> See? This is, uh, this is a Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young tune entitled Love the One You're With. If you're down and confused and you don't remember who you're talking to, concentration slips away when your baby is so far away. Well, there's a road. If you're angry and you're sad, don't say crying over good times you've had. There's a girl right next to you, and she's just waiting for something to do. Well, there's a rose in the fish tank and the eagle flies with the dove. And if you can't. Turn your heart and right into joy. Did he see the girl? Did he your a boy? Did he get it together? Did he make it nice? Yeah. Did you ain't gonna need no more of Well, there's a rose in a fisted glove And the eagle flies with the dove And if you can't be the one you love, honey Love the one you with, love the one you with Good. Fraser Wells again on solo. <laughs> Fraser, where are you from? I'm from the UK. Um, Scotland is where my family's from. Um, we've been living here for five years. Yeah, but this is your first semester with us, right? Yes, this well, is my welcome, first. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's really, really fun for us to be able to do new music, you know, um, well, arrangements that are new. And uh, Mr. Omid Hutter, their second from the left, last semester arranged us a tune. What was that again? I know. <laughs> well, Omid has done another tune for us this year. Um, by, uh, it's an arrangement of a tune by Ray Davies, who was actually here in the Fitzgerald, I want to say about a month ago, I believe. And uh, if you don't know, Ray Davies is the founding member of the band The Kinks, who is uh, uh, a vital role in rock and roll music and its evolution. 
Um, I'll be putting a great chart together for these guys, and I think you're going to love it. It's entitled Waterloo Sunset. Dirty old river, must you keep rolling, rolling into the night? People so busy, makes me feel dizzy, taxi lights shine so bright. bright. But I don't, 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 don't need no friend, as long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset, I am in paradise. Stay at home at night But I don't feel afraid As long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset I am in paradise Every day I look at the world from my window Swarming like flies round Waterloo underground But Terry and Julie Cross over the river Where they feel safe and sound Sound, sound, sound And they don't Need no friend As long as they gaze on Waterloo sunset They are in Shoo up, shoo up Wop, wop. And as long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset, I, I am in a paradise in Waterloo. <laughs> Omid Hutter, folks. Great arrangement, Omid. Nice job. Our last tune is unmistakable. Fun, fun tune. And for it, I'd like, I'm sorry, sound guy, if, if we could uh, cut the reverb in half for this tune, just it's a little more rocky. Yeah? Thank you so much all for coming out and supporting vocal music here at McNally Smith College of Music. Thank you to Judy Donaghy for just getting this sing out thing going and it's so much fun every year. So I'd love a round of applause for her. And there's all kinds of great music following these guys. So stick around and enjoy that. Thank you so much. Please enjoy the Eagles' heartache tonight. Ditta, ditta, wahoo. Somebody's gonna hurt someone before the night is through. Somebody's gonna come undone. There's nothing we can do. Everybody wants to touch somebody if it takes all night. Everybody wants to take a little chance Make it come out right There's gonna be a heartache tonight A heartache tonight I know, I know, I know There's gonna be a heartache tonight A heartache tonight I know, tonight, Lord, I know Some people like to stay out late some folks can't hold on that long But nobody wants to go home now There's too much 
forever. Last all, last all summer long. Sometime before the sun comes up, the radio is gonna play that song. It's gonna be a heartache tonight. Somebody's gonna hurt someone Before the night is through Somebody's gonna come undone There's nothing we can do Everybody wants to touch somebody If it takes all night Everybody wants to take a little chance Make it come out right There's gonna be a heartache tonight A heartache tonight I know There's gonna be a heartache tonight A heartache tonight A heartache tonight Lord, I know We got around the bushes We got down to the on the solo there, everybody. Colin Fitz <laughs> Spencer Christensen, Austin Colden, Colin Smith, Omid Hutter, Fraser Wills. Thanks so much. Uh, now for some something completely different. We're gonna have the musical theater ensemble, who had a very successful show uh, a couple weeks ago in in our auditorium of their show Working. Uh, they're gonna do some selections of that show for you today. Uh, they're really great. They're led by um, a very a very popular and uh, hardworking performer in the area, Aaron Schwab. Um, so please give a applause for the music theater ensemble. <laughs> We got another indicator of the extent of the jobs problem across the country today. A stunning jump in layoffs, which is the last thing you want to hear if you're unemployed or in a small business struggling to get by. Now, while some companies are hiring some workers, many established larger companies are still letting people go. And today, thanks in part to more massive layoffs by American automakers, unemployment for the first time in 25 years in a single state reached 15 percent. Students looking for summer employment to help pay for tuition have fewer jobs to choose from. This is amazing. We've had a lot of executives on who say this finger, this is about Bernanke. This is about Bernanke. He has to be on that call. Forget the executives. Now we turn to other news, chief of the U.S. economy, of the extent of the jobs problems across the country. With growing disillusionment toward Wall Street and Washington as the backdrop, President Obama tried to show some empathy. I think people 
are frustrated and the protesters uh, are giving voice to a more broad-based frustration about how our financial system will system works. Is it Monday already? I hear How can it be Monday? Was it yesterday Monday? The very carols I hear Honey, is it Monday already? The mason singing The waitress singing The farm worker singing The car hacker singing The fireman singing Each one singing The checker, the trucker, the hooker, the housewife I hear Somebody, don't you want to hear the story of my life? One of them movie companies, TV documentaries. Won't you come and ask me, please? And pay me a million dollars to tell you what I do at the store. Because if you pay me a million dollars, I wouldn't got to go and do it no more. One, two, three, four. Just like the song says. manager here. I'm in at work at 7.30 a.m. and I leave at 5 p.m. In between my meetings, I answer messages, email, and try to avoid my boss. One always has a boss. You have a boss. Your boss has a boss. It's politics the entire time. And sometimes you get a good boss, which I've had. And sometimes you get a Satan boss, like the boss I have now. We sent out a notice that said, the Brotherhood of Cubicle Cuties would like to have a Christmas party. And I got called in. And he says, you can't start a union here. And I'm just looking at him going, you? 
should be focusing on the fact that we haven't delivered any work for the past two months. I've been in all different types of cubicles. I've been in high-walled cubicles and half-height cubicles. I was at this one place that didn't have cubicles at all, just desks, eight of us at our little desks answering the phones. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, my career is really taking off now. I paper the walls of my cubicle with posters. I bring in flowers. Oh, I even brought in my favorite ceramic lamp. The little collection of things on top of my computer. We call them computer gods. I guess I have more things than I thought. <laughs> but I like getting fun things because, you know, well, without all the decorations, it's kind of a drab-looking place. So things like glow-in-the-dark skeletons go a long way. I can see the program in the cubicle next to me through reflection in the window. At night, I can see her reflection and see exactly what she's doing. Quite often, she's emailing jokes to her sister. I also acquired a webcam. I position it so it points directly behind me, and then there's a little window at the bottom of my screen. So when someone walks behind me, I can see them. There's a man in the corner of my office who talks very loudly. He talks to this girl that he loves, and his mom is giving him hell and things like that. Finally, I said, you know, I can hear everything you're saying, but now I hear in the corner, and I know that something sensitive is going on. This industry is highly hit by mergers, which means significant layoffs. I've been through two of them already. My mentality is quite different from people 20 years senior the lifers. I have no real sense of loyalty because I know they have a business to run and they will lay me off if it's prudent. But for people 15 years senior, they've given their lives here. For a few measly bucks, you're tossing us aside. I'm like, get over it. It's a different world. There's no loyalty anymore. I don't perceive anyone my age thinks they got a job here. They've got a job for life. What they feel is, all right, I'm going to get as much money from this company as I can. Then I'm going to move and get more money. Jobs are not big enough for people. When you ask someone who they are, they define themselves by their job. I'm a doctor, I'm a carpenter, I'm a radio announcer. If someone asks me, I'll say, my name is Amanda McKinney. At certain points in time, I do things for a living. I don't like putting a housewife down, but everyone has done it for so long, it's sort of the thing you do. Deep down, I feel that what I do is important. But you just hate to say it, because what are you, just a housewife? I love being a housewife. Maybe that's why I feel so guilty. I shouldn't be happy doing what I'm doing. All I am is just a housewife. Nothing special, nothing great. What I do is kind of boring. If you'd rather, it can wait. All I am is someone's mother. All I am is someone's wife. All of which seems unimportant. All it is is just my life. Do the laundry, wash the dishes, take the dog out, clean the house. Shop for groceries, look for specials. God, it sounds so Mickey Mouse. Drop the kids off, pick their shirts up. Try to lose weight, try again. Keep the troops fed, pick their things up. Lose your patience, count to ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All I am is just a housewife, just a housewife. Nothing great. What I do is out of fashion. What I feel is out of date. All I am is someone's mother. Right away, I'm not too bright. What I do is unfulfilling. So the TV talk shows tell me every night. I don't mean to complain at all, but they make you feel like you're two feet tall when you're just a wife. Just a house. Nowadays, all the magazines make a bunch of beans out of family life. My life. You're a whiz if 
you go to work, but you're just a jerk if you say you won't. Just a housewife. People say that they think it's fine if the choice is mine, but you know they don't. What I do, what I choose to do may be dumb to you, but it's not to me. Is it dumb that they need me there? Is it dumb to care? Because I do, you see. And I mean, did you ever think, really stop and think what a job it was? Doing all the things that a housewife does. I'm afraid it's unimpressive. All I am is someone's mother. Nothing special. What I do is unexciting. Is kind of dumb. Take the kids here. Take the kids there. Mommy. I don't mean to complain at all. All I am is busy, busy every day. All I am is like my mother. All I am is. Just a housewife. Would you like your quota of mercury today? What's exciting at the bar that I could offer? It would be very boring if I were to say, would you like a cocktail? Over and over. So I switch it up for my own enjoyment. I say, what's exciting at the bar that I could offer? Or something. Maybe with cocktails, I give them a little philosophy. They have coffee, I give them political science. I have an opinion on every subject there is. My bosses don't like it, so I speak sotto voce. But if I get heated, I don't give a damn. I speak like an Italian speaks. I have to be a waitress. How else does the world come to me? Everyone has to eat, everyone has hunger, and I serve them. I give service. I can't be servile, there's a difference. I get intoxicated with giving service. It becomes theatrical and I feel like Matahari and it intoxicates me. I'm on a stage. There's some as don't care when they put down a plate. There's a sound, not with me. When they move a chair, it'll scrape with a grate on the ground, not with me. I will have my hand right when I place a glass. Notice how I stand right as customers pass. Serve a demi tasse with a gesture so gentle, or do it again till it's near oriental. La, la, da, 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 da. It's an art, it's an art to be a fine waitress, to see that you pleasure each guest. There's a twist to my wrist when I bring your steak in and watch how I take in your liver and bacon. It all will be stylish and smart. That's what makes it an art. I remember one day, as I do now and then, I had shakes. Down I went. There with my tray full of seven prime tenderloin steaks. Down I went. But I kept my poise, not one guest heard me fall. Never made a noise, not one noise, food and all. If you have to crawl, you give them what they like. You carry your tray like it's almost lay like la la -dee -da -dee -dee -da -dee -dee -da -da -da. It's an art, it's an art to be a fine waitress. Each evening I treasure the test. Like tonight was a fight, cause they hired this bus boy. Clothes on a must boy and guests heard him cuss boy. Do we have a quick heart to heart? Even that is an art. Your steak, my lady. I like to say, my lady, I hate ma'am. And sometimes I say playfully to the man, your check, my lord. Well, let's see now how much you want me to tip you. Ha, do what you want. Don't play God with me. Important for people like captains and barmen. For them, 
It's a tipsy for me. I'm a gypsy, just toss me a coin. Now suddenly feel like I'm Carmen. So on with the ulcer, the backache, the hot, sweaty feet. On you go through. Is your night dull, sir? And Madam wants what with her meat? On you go. 2 a.m. approaches, the curtains descend. There, among the roaches, my act's at an end. Every night I tend to find myself crying. There's no work so trying or so satisfying. I tell everyone, I'm a waitress in that crowd. When someone says to me, gee, Louise, you're terrific. How come you're just a waitress? You know what I say to them? I say, why don't you think you deserve to be served by me? It's an art. This it's an art this this to be a great wear of this. Go without leisure or rest. Could we have a check, please? I prove I'm a pro. Maybe I'm not quite yes. as Michelangelo. It's not just the work. Somebody built the pyramids. The pyramids, the Empire State Building, those things don't just happen. I don't care how little you did. You drive down the road and you say, I worked on this road. If you see a bridge, you say, I built that bridge. You want to know what I think? If a carpenter builds a cabin for poets, the poets owe the carpenter a plaque, just three or four lines on the wall. Though we labor with our minds, this place we can relax in was built by someone who can work with his hands. A painter can point to a painting. A writer can point to a book. What can I point to? Everyone should have something to point to. You know what I'd like? I'd like to see a building, say, uh, say the Empire State. And at the top of it, I'd like to see a plaque, foot, foot long from top to bottom, with the names of every iron worker, every bricklayer, every electrician, all the names. So when a parent can take his kid by, he can point up and say, See that building? I was the one who did the design. I was the one who drafted the plans. Every detail and every line. See that building? I was the one who was the I was the one who worked up above. Look at those bricks, those bricks are mine. See that building? Look how my door hangs in the frame. See that building? Forty flights up, I scratch my name. See that building? I'm on the staff, I work as a guard. I clean the floors and I clean them good. People don't know my job is hard. See that building? Five days a week, I work at a desk. I do the books, I handle the mail. Nine on the dot, I punch my car. See that window, up on the ledge. Ten from the top, see that window. Count on the left, one, two, three, stop. That's where I work. Everyone should have something to point to, something to be proud of. Look what I did, see what I done. I did the job, I was the one. Everyone should have something to point to, something to be tall in the crowd. on the line, that's where I sweat to earn my pay. See that building, that's where I put the food on our place. That's where I've lived a piece of my life, where I can bring my kids and stay. See that building, the love of the sun, decisions are made. See that building, the mellows are touched, the sun was the same, the grandma's are touched, the family was the same, the office 
was fun, the coffee is sold, the digging was done, the building was built for all eyes to see. Okay, that was great. We're going to take a quick 15-minute intermission. It's not in the program, but we're going to take a little break. So I'll see you back here in 15 minutes where we're going to have CVE and then the large choir to finish up the program. So we'll see you back soon.